Okay. Yeah. So I'm asking what is the best process for reviewing these proposed revisions on pages three, four, and five? Well, can I summarize that very briefly? Sure. Would that, would that be, uh, okay. Uh, Please do. 3.3.2 uh, basically um, is, is, is much the way it, it uh, looked before, uh, except um, broader access, and I picked up on some suggestions uh, from TJW about uh, instructing uh, city employees they must discourage uh, people from uh, filing a complaint, and the um, officers um, of APD should be responsible for being informed about the complaint process and responsible for providing complete and accurate information. Um, Wait. Yeah. Are you moving on? Oh, that was 3.3.2, yeah. Okay, so I, I wasn't yeah. here at the last yeah. meeting, and I really appreciate all of you for being here. Uh, but I did watch the video, and I remember it was brought up, the idea of a kiosk in the Larkham yeah. building. Uh, and access to a computer um, so that there was one kind of centralized place that was known to everyone. So I don't see that incorporated. And I also remember um, well, that it was brought up that people um, on the task force had a concern about the challenge of training too extensively for intake, that the whole process of making the complaint, we want it to be as simple and as accessible and as um, with as few obstacles as possible, uh, but the, the key would be to get it to the commission so that the commission can respond to the com complainant. Wasn't it you, Dwight, who talked about not doing an oral intake or any kind of interview, but simply no. filling out a form? No. And, and I'm not in favor of, the, of there being only one place where people can file a complaint, uh, and certainly not in City Hall, because there are people who will never go in City Hall. Okay. So. Okay, so noted. Um, all right, thanks, Rich. Proceed. Shall I get it would be great if if it could be held off until we're done with page five. Um okay. Um three point three point three I um it came very very substantial because I think um I think a lot of the discussion last uh, last time was that it's desirable that um, if a person doesn't want a complaint being, that the fact of the complaint being revealed to the police department, or at least at a given time, mm -hmm. that um, that the complainant should have that uh, have that option. Um, and uh, I, I, I recast it, and basically it comes down to uh, asking the complainant uh, two sets of questions at the time the, uh, the complaint's filed, assuming the complaint is, uh, isn't anonymous. Uh, do you want the police to know about this complaint? And if so, do you want the public to know about it? Okay. And then, uh, as assuming that uh, you do want the police uh, to know about it, do you want them to know that you're the person who filed the complaint? Okay. Uh, because somebody might say, I'm, I'm happy for the police to know it, but I don't want them to know that I'm the person who did it. And do you want the public to know that? And and then the uh, and then the th then the commission would proceed from from there in accordance with the complainant's wishes. Um, that to me took care of uh, at least most of the uh, the concerns that uh, that the complainant is in essence master of the complaint and can decide um, whether how the uh, how the commission would uh, would uh, would proceed. Um, in other words, if it, if it would uh, reveal the complaint to the uh, APD. Now, they, they, I mean, there are further issues, obviously, but that's that's the basic uh, idea to ask the complainant, uh, "What information do you want to uh, disclose?" That's that's basically what I was trying to do in uh, three point three point three. Um, I'm going to jump back to three point yeah. three point two. Uh, I noted that one new point that was brought forth 
by TJW's document is that the complainant does not have to be a resident of Ann Arbor or a citizen to file a complaint with the commission. Right. This is on page 13. And the commission will not require, a, not inquire about, nor is required to report any person's immigration status. So this is a, an important new consideration. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, 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 the wording in the draft was any person may file, so that would be broad enough. It didn't say anything about immigration status. Well, we already have a non solicitation ordinance in the city here. You cannot have anything about the immigration ordinance. We actually, I co sponsored it, I think, last year, so it's already there. So are you saying that it's not necessary? Yeah, because it's illegal. Our staff cannot ask, so. It may not, I don't know. I'm as an addition, just okay. if someone That's reads fine. it, because uh, I would agree, I don't, they're irrelevant to someone filing a complaint, but it can help another place where it can be emphasized. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Can you continue? Um, yeah. Um, okay. Um, so 3.3.4 was time for initiation of review, which is got general uh, approval, and I, I left that unchanged. And this then, is on page five. Yeah. And then, um, uh, so then I think that um, the, the, the problems were expressed with respect to 3.3.6, but I think the, the problem really was 3.3.5, which, which, as previously drafted, indicated that uh, promptly on receiving a complaint, the commission would refer it to the police department. And now that's worded as an if. If the complainant decides that the complaint should be disclosed to the, uh, to the uh, uh, police department, the commission should uh, promptly refer, uh, should, uh, to, uh, should refer to the police chief. <coughs> um, and, then, and then I left 3.3.6 um, Un, unchanged. Um, now, as I said, I mean, I, I thought that this uh, um, addressed what, what I regarded as the, the, the chief concern um, that, uh, that the um, complainant might not want the police uh, to hear about the complaint. I, I'll say in my experience with, with the U of M committee, um, uh, the, the vast majority of complainants do, do want, they, they come into the oversight body wanting the complaint to be uh, passed, uh, passed on. Um, I mean, the only two cases uh, uh, that we had where, where there was hesitation, and, and then eventually they did. It, 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 it was really very particularized issues in the particular cases. It wasn't a matter of being a member of a population that felt targeted or anything like that. It was uh, very individualized issues, and eventually they did want it uh, handed over. What I don't know is that if someone files a complaint, with the commission and wants it reported to the police, um, in other words, the, the disclosure of the individual, the nature of what happened, whatever evidence they have, what is going through that complainant's mind and not going to the police directly? Why go to the commission yeah. as a conduit as opposed to the police directly? And, and I think Sumi raised that. So, so let, me, uh, last, uh, last let, me, let me address that. I, 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 think, I think there are a few things. Um, one is that the, uh, one thing, of course, some, some complaints don't even know there is anything internal, okay? And I think the assumption of, of many people is that if they're going internal, they're just going to speak to the police who are just going to find in favor of their own and not give them a fair crack. But if they go to the, to the, the commission, then the commission says, okay, we will look into this and we will come up with our own conclusion. So now that might, of course, mean, and I, as I'm saying in most cases, I think it does mean we'll get information from the police, we'll hear what the police have to say, so in that instance, but we'll draw our own conclusions. So in that instance, the complainant may well be thinking, if I go to the commission, I'm developing an ally, I'm developing someone who I believe will be supportive Maybe. and will uh, we'll do that as opposed to just going to the police? Maybe, well, maybe, but maybe yeah. not. Yeah. 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 They may simply want to make sure that other people know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, but I do that all the time. If, yeah. if I want to make sure I'm going to get an answer, I will copy two or three people. 
just to put pressure on the person who may not answer me. Yeah. And, and they don't necessarily know that it's going to be somebody supportive, but at least an independent, an independent exactly. voice, an independent consideration, which is a big deal. Isn't there another um, part of the response that the commission uh, makes when a complaint, a complainant comes to the commission in the form of understanding what the process might be, uh, advice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, about utilizing the commission's yes. capability to be of of assistance. I mean, it's more than just filing the complaint. Yeah, I, and, and I can say in the two cases that I mentioned where they didn't want us to go to the police right away, I mean, but in, frankly, in both cases, there were mental health uh, issues, and I think they needed some support and solace, you know, um, which maybe we were able to provide. Um. I, I don't know how many of you, since it came to us this morning, were, had the time today to look at, at the document. I did. You did. I did not. <laughs> so I think that there, I guess I'm uncomfortable with the amount of new suggestions that are being made and the idea that we, we just go through what we decided and move on. Well, can, can, shall we, okay. Oh, no, I was just going to say that, I, I mean, I, I, I know it's a lot of material. I spent uh, hours today wrestling with it, but I know that, that not everybody did. And I'm just, I'm just wondering whether it makes sense to come back to it at another time when well, people have had more. Would, we, would it make sense to hear from Marin yeah, sure, about it? Sure. Okay, Marin. Maren, would it be possible for you to speak so that they can hear you also? Because all that mic is doing is recording it for the video. Yeah. It doesn't. Do you want me to sit at the table? You want me to sit at the I, I like you right where you are because that <laughs> way you speak louder. Um, louder. OK. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm, I'm wondering why she can't sit up here so that you all can really understand and we can see her and hear her and you can too. You need to hear I will just not mumble. There okay. Thank you. I, I can hear you. Great. Yeah, just wave with me if you can't hear me or understand me. So I think the biggest difference that I wanted to raise um, within Rich's revisions initially are um, within his procedural choices, section 3.3.3, within his procedural choices for filing a complaint. The issue that I raised two weeks ago that I still have an issue with is that um, Rich is still asking somebody to submit a complaint form, however they do that, and then also, at the time they're submitting, answer five different questions around now who they're disclosing it to, whether it's anonymous or not, whether it's confidential. And so again, you're asking somebody who's submitting a complaint to understand the implications, all of those things at that time. The revision that we're suggesting is that that person only has to decide if they're submitting their name and their contact information, and it's made very clear in the form that their name will remain confidential, and if they choose to submit it anonymously or not, they can also do that. And I think the thing that, that the problem with having people fill out five different questions is that you're then asking that person who's not gonna understand what the implications of all those things are to seek the AADL librarian and try to ask them, can you explain to me what under seal or not means? You're gonna create more problems and have to do more training with the people w f where the forms are available than if you just have the choice of confidential or not, or the choice of anonymous or not, and then somebody submitting their name. Does that make sense? It does yeah. to me. So I think that those choices are super important for people, but I think asking somebody to understand them when they're, at the time they're submitting a complaint is putting too great a burden on a person. Can, can I just say, I, I, I mean, I appreciate the suggestion. I, frankly, I thought that it might be 
more comfortable for somebody right off to have sort of just to have the initial choice and, and be told that it'll be explained later. But if the, if the task force would prefer that those choices not be presented at all on the form, then it's easy enough to, to say that, the, uh, uh, to, to, to take the way Marin is saying and just say that when the uh, person is contacted by uh, a representative, which we say, then, then the choices will be explained. I was trying to sort of give an extra uh -huh. extra option, but if, if the task force is uncomfortable with that, I can understand that. Yes? What, what, what I, I understand what you're saying, but what I'm uncomfortable with is locking the commission into something that we decide about the form. Yeah, yeah. Because once the commission is formed, they will, I'm assuming, have working sessions where they talk about yeah. what should be on that form, yeah. how should the form look. So I would be more comfortable with us having some kind of broad language that says a form must be developed where, you know, that's user-friendly, sure. yeah. that people can understand, and then leave it to the commission to work out the details of that form. That's what I would be comfortable with. So, so this is a perfect segue into our idea of our report which will be a supplementary document to the draft that Anna Lemler is going to head up for us. And we can make the suggestion, uh, but it's, it's our way of offering the commission, once they're set up, here's the broad language that gives you the power to create the form. Right. Please consider, and then there's an explanation about the situation that the person making the complaint is in psychologically, if it's the right time, how you would be, how would you, how would you ensure that they understand the implications of all the options and the decisions, or something that, like that? Well, that's why I'm saying is because once the commission is put into place, they could totally take that whole, I don't want the public to think that the form that we suggest is yeah. the form that's going to be used. Yeah. And then they come together and decide on something completely different. Mm -hmm. And then the public has an expectation that we've put into place that the commission has no. So I think the language really needs to be broad, but narrow enough to say that it has to be, you know, it should be, our suggestion would be that it should be user friendly. Yeah. And then they would have to struggle with what is that user friendliness. Yeah. I think you would want to say, I want to limit the burden of decisions that a person has yeah. to make initially Correct. when submitting a form. But I wouldn't get specific in what yeah. exactly is on the form, sure. other than name, like you said, and sure. that kind of stuff. Okay. Robin, along those lines, do you feel comfortable with Graydon's suggestion that even though the ordinance exists about not asking for immigration, yeah, proof of citizen, that it's okay to we, offer that. Yeah, and we, we shouldn't, in my opinion, we shouldn't be asking for race, sex, ethnicity, any of that until the commission decides, you know, how are they gonna handle that information? Because that's important information. How they're going to collect it and how they're going to account for it is going to be an important process for them. But what I was referring to was having in the language of the draft. Right. That it should not that ask. That complaints can be filed by. Right. And Anybody. And that okay. they will not ask be asked. For race, ethnicity, citizenship. Okay. Sex, any of that, unless, you know, and until the person just determines that they want to release that kind of information. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I just want to remind ourselves that there was a resident uh, who came, resident or whoever, a person that was present, uh, I believe not the last meeting, but the meeting before, who talked about big data, whereas this complaint process itself, we need to be collecting enough information, not immigration status, right. but uh, for example, whether it's regarding who is being stopped when on the road and stuff, that big data, while this whole information is coming in, that is going to help us generate reports to have another aspect of, this is uh, incidence review, but the data that comes from there is also going to help us 
to understand if there is systemic discrimination or systemic targeting of people. So I am just worried, not the immigration status, that we can't ask, but prohibiting asking, for example, um, I know race is a social construct, uh, <laughs> <laughs> too much social science, uh, but no. not knowing whether you're African American or well, not, whether I think you're I Hispanic or not, you actually might be, I'm just putting it out there, a disservice yeah. for big data. I, well, I, I agree. I think the concern is actually that an uh, infrastructural concern within the receipt of the complaint. So if I fill out my information and I say my gender, my age, where uh, something occurred, if I submit confident, you know, s personal information, mm -hmm. that I think this commission, this task force just to make s needs to make sure that there's an infrastructure in place within whomever is collecting that information that it remains confidential. So that's what it needs to be ensured. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that the city um, knows how to keep information confidential. So we are not prohibiting collecting information, right? Whether right. No, okay. I, yeah. no, 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 no. I, I We're talking about the initial complaint to. form and what, what we want yeah. to be the burden of the complainant. Um, this actually shifts into the expansion and revision that we put in on 3.3.4, which Rich right now has it's the time for initiation and review. Um, I expanded this section to be called recording, classifying, and reporting complaints. So this is it's on page 16. On page 5, sorry. Oh, okay, that's on. Um, well, it's well, 16 right now, in the packet. Yeah. So um, I just think it's important to note that, this, it, it, that it, the process is explicit by which um, the way in which uh, sorry, complaints are received, the way in which they're classified, and the reporting that will occur on complaint data and none of that is in that section, so um, I would suggest adding it. So you're referring to the paragraph that's uh, under complaint classification system, letter B. The agency shall have a complaint classification system, for example, harassment, sexual misconduct, unnecessary or excessive force, inappropriate language or conduct, yeah. discrimination, yeah. retaliation, failure to wear or display required identification, or identify oneself by name and badge number when requested to do so by a member of the public. Yeah, section B as well as section A and section D. So section A would be your, that there's a record of all the complaints that were received. Uh huh. And section D that there's reporting on aggregate complaint <coughs> data. Yes, I remember the woman who spoke about big data at the last meeting <coughs> and I was hoping she would be here tonight. Um, but if she's watching, <laughs> please contact the task force. <laughs> okay, continue, Maren, thank you. Um, so the other thing I wanna point out is um, the process that we went through in order to, com to create our oversight complaint process. So um, Rich's process then goes into the referral to the um, police chief like, and that's assuming that somebody chose for the police chief or APD to know the information. So we both reviewed um, the oversight processes for multiple um, cities, but we also reviewed processes by which um, somebody who has experienced harm um, reports that harm to an institution. So we also reviewed, um, we have a person on our team who's an expert in sexual misconduct reporting schemas review and has reviewed 385 of them across the country in different college campuses. So our um, complaint process is both a process that uh, uses, looks at oversight reporting processes, but also considers the ways in which people who have experienced trauma have to report that trauma to institutions and also adds that into and considers that in a rep complaint reporting process. And that is important to your question, Dick. Um, that is important because the second most common reported um, kind of police misconduct is police sexual misconduct. 
And so the reason why somebody might not want to go to internal affairs is because they don't want to report sexual misconduct to the police. So that is in part why this is absolutely critical, to have an independent body by which people can report trauma that they've experienced at the hands of police. So that is why in our document we're trying to make it very explicit that after the commission receives a complaint, the first thing that they do is gather information about that complaint from somebody that isn't a police officer within the city administration. So, and that the chief of police is not informed. So that that person would be able to get documentation should an uh, investigation have occurred, that the commission would be able to get that information, would get to receive any information that might exist around that, but without having to go to the police, to, um, and certainly not like um, triggering a potential officer involved in that um, incident through that process. And after the commission receives that information, they would then check in with the person who the complainant to talk to them about here's the information we can gather from the city, here's what we know, and here are the next steps that we could take. So in Rich's document, and those next steps could include, now we'd like a summary um, investigative report from the chief of police. They could also include other options like mediation, um, and they could include then taking, uh, initiating some kind of investigation to gather further information um, should that not have occurred in the, in the, after the initial incident. So, um, so in terms of Rich's document going straight into 3.3.5, the referral of the matter to the chief of police, and 3.3.6, the report by the chief of police, I actually wanted to add a section um, or to however you want to say it. I want to um, make sure that it's clear that after a, a complaint is received that, um, that there's a way in which there's initial data gathering that occurs around the incident um, by the commission that doesn't involve the police um, before and that there's then a step in which they uh, check in with the complainant before they engage the chief of police or engage in any kind of investigation. So, yes. Before you went on, I wanted to ask a question about the classification. Yeah. The purposes of the classification is to tell us the nature of the problem. Yeah. And we're doing that by <coughs> receiving complaints. And we want to categorize those complaints, and you gave us some examples. Would it not be helpful if the police had the same categori ca categories as the commission? One. In, in terms of? In other words, someone, they get a complaint that's filed with them. Um, shouldn't there, do you think there ought to be a comparable classification by the police? I'm not going to try to change police policy, and I don't think that's within the purview of the commission. I think it would be great if they had that classification system. But this is, um, these are okay. very similar categories to those used in the D.C. Um, Office okay. of Police Complaints. And those are, and what that, al that, that classification allows for is for um, them to be transparent about the kinds of complaints they receive, the number they've received, and what the um, resolution was. Um, and that's like on their website, anybody can see that right now. So it allows the public to understand the kinds of complaints that are being received in aggregate. Maren, the additions that you're talking about, are they on, are they D, D and E? Can you tell me what page you're on? 15. Or are they C, D, and E? So C is at the. Where is E? I know. I'm so sorry. So. I think it's on 16. Under 3.3.3, you have um, A, initial form submission, confidential or anonymous filing. B, follow-up from commission under seal or not. C, follow-up from commission open or confidential. And then on page 15, you have D, 
Notice of complaint receipt. Complainants who share their names shall be promptly notified within seven days of the receipt by the commission of complaint form or submission. And finally, E, process of continuous consent. Is yep. that what you're referring to? That is uh, what I was referring to. Those are the changes to 3.3.3. Um, so that's the initial process of when a complaint is received. Okay. Um, the person having a conversation with the complainant okay. around their options, around disclosure. Um, the thing that I just talked about uh, is not in Rich's document. So that's why I'm proposing it. And so I've proposed revising his section 3.3.5. Which is to ex on page 16. That and is 17. titled as referral of matter to the chief of police to include an initial step where the commission gathers any information that if, would have, if any information exists about an incident, the commission receives that information and can review it before, and then have a conversation with the person who submitted the complaint about what the next step should be. Um, yes, Rich. Oh, I'm then Robin. I'm sorry, I won't, I'm not paying attention, this sorry. Is just a quick question. Um, what you're proposing in my mind is people will be reporting crimes. If a police officer sexually assaults someone, that's a crime. And generally speaking, crimes of that nature should be reported you know, to the police so they can be investigated and then to the prosecutor to see if appropriate charges are brought. So how would you see the commission handling that sure. if we're receiving, if that we're, <laughs> if they are receiving complaints about crimes that are being committed, yeah. th then you're talking <coughs> about a, a, a another yeah. segment. So in DC, they have a whole process, a schema that you can also look at. If somebody submits a complaint that actually needs prosecution, then mm -hmm. the person who is the executive director of their, um, of their Oversight Commission uh -huh. then refers that to a, I think you know a lawyer to actually look into prosecute like prosecution. So, but, but, but I, a, but I and I don't mean to interrupt you, but a prosecutor can't prosecute without a report, a police report. There has to be you know the DNA has to be collected, all of that stuff, and the police generally do that. So, what body would do that if we're not letting the police know that? <laughs> A crime has been committed and it needs to be investigated. I don't think you got HIPAA laws that would keep that kind of information from being released to the everyday citizen, or you know, a commission. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how that process could work. I think these are really good questions. Um, and, and I apologize because I didn't have time to, to read your sure. It, and so I'm just doing this all in my head. I would really love if we could, I don't know, table this so that we could all go through it. And I know these two ladies said that they haven't read it and then come back to it so we can have a real good discussion sure. about it. Sure. Yeah. So that that's just my suggestion. Go ahead. I kind of understand what you're raising here. So if they have a sexual violence, they are going to collect. The, so the conflict of interest, right? We are going back to the police. So I think the example I can give you, Rob, Robin, is that um, in 2014, there was a police officer who stopped a woman for a traffic stop yep. and then tried to solicit yep. her for sex yep. in order for leniency Several in the ticket. Times, yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, are you saying that that is a case where the commission couldn't look into that? Well, this, so as I understand it, because I'm not a prosecutor, but as I understand the prosecutorial process from you know my work experience, the state police did that investigation and they did a report. The Ann Arbor police did not investigate themselves. The state police <coughs> did that investigation and then based on their findings that was then submitted to the county prosecutor for charges to be brought. Mm -hmm. And that's how he was prosecuted and subsequently. Um, so I think it would be really important that a body exists that is independent, that if somebody has experienced some kind of harassment, sexual harassment, crime. Or a crime, the that they can come to that independent body and let them know. <coughs> and I think figuring out the process by which that pro, pro, uh, happens, that happens, yeah. but then where you guys, where the commission would then, the sort of like steps that it would take to report that, I think is really critical. Right. But I still think that letting people know 
that there's an independent space because sexual misconduct is so frequently not reported Correct. for various obvious reasons that I think it's important that this commission make that explicit and that it's imp independent of the police so people don't really have a safe space to report that. You guys figuring out the, you know, well, again, not flow chart us, of... The commission. <laughs> sure, but like we can look into different examples but and see what that right. process looks like. Yeah. Um, a basis for really focusing and considering on this. Um, yes, Rich? Um, so I, let me say, the, the um, classification, I think that's uh, uh, fine in reporting. I think I might be inclined to move that to the section where we talk about reporting. And uh, I like your idea of sort of continuous consultation with the complainant to, to, to discuss uh, choices. This, uh, this idea, uh, and, and let me emphasize again that the way, uh, the way I redrafted it, it, it the, the complainant would have the choice of coming to the commission and saying, uh -huh. I want to speak to you, and I don't want you, at least as of now, informing the, uh, the police chief. I, I don't think that there's um, any good way of getting information out of the police department without the uh, involvement of uh, senior leadership of, uh, of, of the police. Um, and, and this is something we can discuss uh, further, but uh, <coughs> we're talking about possible um, ongoing investigations. Uh, some of this material may, may just not, uh, as the chief has emphasized mm -hmm. to us, it, it, it may not be proper to, uh, to release. It's not something you can have lower level administrative personnel uh, perform. Um, and it's, it's something that, that has uh, you know, great, sens great sensitivity. And the way that uh, TJW drafted it, it's like in every case, um, it's going to, you're, you're going to try to get information out of the department without the chief knowing. I, I, I think that's just, um, I, I think it's counterproductive and impractical. Now, if, if you know, I mean, maybe the, the task force wants to put off discussion of, of this till later, till we all have the chance to absorb it and, and get more information, frankly, from, from the chief and from the city attorney about how, uh, whether it could work. I don't think it could, you know. And, and, and I, don't think it's, I don't think it's necessary because the complainant has the choice of saying, I don't want you to go to the police. And then the commission won't until such time as the, the, the complainant says, okay. So if the commission becomes aware that there's an officer, and this is just a what if, I, I, yeah. using the example that's already been brought up, that there's an officer out there stopping women, asking them for sex, which is harassment, the commission is just going to sit on that information and allow that officer to continue to perpetrate yeah. and on other women? I mean, it's, uh, it's an interesting question whether, whether the commission not, has I, an obligation I, I to... I, can't, uh, I would never, ever think that that's a good thing. And I also yeah. think it's sad that within the people who have the ability to access investigative records, um, that there's no one in the professional standards section personnel, um, and there's nobody in the city attorney's office that aren't police that couldn't share the investigative report that's redacted in whatever way that it needs to be with the commission. Well, if there is an investigative report, and if there is an investigative report they already know about, then, then senior leadership already knows about the incident. So then I don't uh, see, see why, they're, why, why the fact of the complaint wouldn't be um, available to the So to the, the point is that the <clears throat> if somebody is harassing a person, if a woman gets harassed at a traffic stop and comes to the commission and says, I would like to report this and I want you to look into it, um, the commission doesn't know whether or not an investigative report exists. And the commission may or may not know the police officer's name who's doing this, who's committing this harassment. And so I am asking that there be a mechanism by which the commission can go to someone in the city's attorney's office or someone in standards, professional standards re review personnel and say, does an investigative report exist? And I don't think that the chief of police should have to answer that question. Mm -hmm. So they're asking whether or not that information exists. They're not even asking for the report because yeah. that helps them to know what their next steps might be. Can, can I suggest, I, 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 I've already, as some of you know, I've spent a lot of time with Marin already and I'd be happy to spend more. Uh, um, well, I think what I'd like is yeah. for a group of us, not a quorum, yeah. Yeah. to spend more time with 
this issue and with uh, whoever else within the city yeah. we would need in order to really flush this out yeah. okay. because it feels like a very critical uh, consideration to be incorporated somehow into the document and we don't want to lose it because we don't understand what all the options might be. Exactly. I guess what I'm wanting to know right now, Maren, is how, since we are not fully familiar and prepared to engage with you on this, um, can we figure out a, what we'd like to do, task force? I mean, it's, I, I feel that that it does you a disservice that we don't. Right, I'm not. Yeah, we I'm haven't sorry. digested it right. all, <laughs> so. and that what you've provided is very uh, provocative and very valuable. Right. So, can, can, I, I think oh. it would be very helpful if we, if, if three or four of us task force members could sit with Barrett and go over this and try to flesh out, and um, and as you said, Lori, maybe someone in the city administration that would we would be able to tap or include in this mm -hmm. in some way. Um, I'm not prepared to talk about this mm -hmm. and several of us I know are not. Okay. So, so I was gonna and, ask, and I mean, it really is taking up a lot of time yeah. for things other things that we need to right be now it at. really does feel like it's the Rich and Marin show point counterpoint. Yeah. Right. And I don't think we're getting anywhere yeah. in terms of moving things forward as a task force. Mm -hmm. And so I keep hearing, I wrote, I thought, I did, this is what I did. And as a task force member, I'm feeling really kind of left out, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sitting on this task force to, you know, it's not, it's not the funnest thing in life. So it would be helpful mm -hmm. to be able to really understand uh, because some time has been able to be put into it instead of receiving it first thing in the morning and now give us your thoughts. Uh -huh. um, I would like to have more input from a broader section of the task force. Okay. And okay. even if there's somebody else from your organization who can be part of this discussion. But like I said, right now it feels like count counterpoint with Rich and Mary. Okay. That's just um, my thought. Dwight? When, and then Mark one. When that um, smaller group is put together. It needs to be gender balanced. Uh, you can't have all men speaking to this issue. You, you want? Gender, gender balance. Nor can you have all women. You cannot have all men on that. Pardon? Nor can we have all women. That's why I said gender balance. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because we know Rich has Rich. to be on it. Oh, um, um, if able to, I would like to be a part of the discussion, being that I'm a youth member okay. um, and also hmm. from a low income background. Great. And Rich? And, and, and I would too, and I think it would be very useful if, uh, if the chief would be willing to talk. I mean, I think it would be good to get task force members, TJW members, and, and the chief in, in the room together to, to, to talk about this and see, you know. Maren, thank you. Thank you, Maren. Is that, Sorry we didn't is get that to acceptable it. to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to have been able to share information earlier with you all, but I got all of Rich's revisions on Tuesday. So, sure. It's all right. You know, I'm Sure. Yeah. We appreciate it. Sorry, Thank I, you. And I'm trying to I, expedite this process. Well, I somehow thought they were going to you earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, I, was, so, I think I was, um, I may have been among the minority who was able to read all of hers, but I think I'm the only one who's retired. <laughs> and um, Are you rubbing that in? Because <laughs> I really felt that. Uh, if you can take 20 years off my life, we'll be cool. Um, <laughs> I am very appreciative of the work that you did, and I agreed with mo almost everything that you, sh that you shared. Um, but I've had a chance to study it, and I do think that it deserves a lot of study. Mm -hmm. so. I also just wanted to say thank you. I think I'm speaking for everybody in the task force. You're being, even though not all ideas are accepted or rejected, what you've undertaken is diving really deep mm -hmm. into this issue. You've done some individual research, you've brought your own experiences, and you've put them down in writing so people can see it, look at the words, judge it, ask questions about it. And I can only imagine 
I don't want to embarrass you by asking how many hours you put into it. But this is an enormous undertaking, and I think everybody around the table is deeply appreciative of you doing it and want to weigh in on diverse views. That's why there's public comment. And you've enshrined public comment in a way that uh, few others can or have. And so I think on behalf of everybody, we want to say thank you. Um, before we move on then, I saw some hands raised. So let's consider this a break in the segment. Shirley and then uh, Amber? No? No. Okay. I'm Okay. <laughs> Great. Let's let's hear from you. As it relates to what we've just been talking about. All right. Um, you need to come. Do I need to come up with the mic? Please come up. I'm not gonna be nice because I'm tired of being nice to y'all. Oh, I have a question to you. Did you meet with Rich and talk to him about this? Yeah. When? Uh, last week, Thursday. And so what did you do with that information? I, did you share it with the task force? I, I shared my, I, I did not summarize the whole meeting. I spent a lot of time and we had a good change of exchange of views and I absorbed information from her and from other sources and I pr presented my, my proposed provisions. Did you share it with the entire task force? I shared my proposed revisions with the entire task force. I'm talking about your meeting with Lauren. I'm with Myron. I, I shared with them all that I was meeting with her. So you all knew about this? Yeah. We knew that they were meeting, yes. But you didn't know the content? No. I wasn't at the meeting, no. Yeah. Yeah. As an, uh, what I'm, the point I'm trying to get, it's important. Dick says it's important. Dwight read it, it's important. It certainly is important to me as a community person. And so I'm a little befuddled that you met with her and went over some of this. And so they ought to know a little more so that we could discuss it tonight. And so why did you not put that kind of emphasis on it? I, yeah. Why don't you let her finish okay. and we can all wait. Right. Oh, he can speak. Well, should, should, I, should I answer? Go ahead. All right. Look, I I didn't take notes during the meeting. We had a good we had a good exchange of views. I I asked to meet with uh, Marin as any member of the task force uh, could have. Um, I um, uh, because then I was going to try to present my sense of where this uh, should all go. I did not uh, undertake, in, in, in the task force has gotten many communications uh, from me. I didn't take minutes on our meeting. I didn't presume to, to summarize it all. I knew that Marin uh, was very capable of presenting uh, her, 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 her views. Uh, I, I mean, I, I've tried to be very open with the, uh, the task force, and everything that uh, I've, I've written uh, of any substance has become, has become public. I, I don't think, I haven't tried to hide any balls. I, that, that's the best I can say. Dick, surely Dick I, wants to I am speak. a member of the task force. And um, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we get a lot of emails. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of emails from everyone. And that as Rich has changed his uh, template and highlighted revisions or changes that sometimes incorporated what he's learned from others, and there isn't a person around this table that hasn't had discussions outside of this room with many people trying to learn information. And we did not have as a practice that every conversation that we have, the chairs meet with people all the time. And they have discussions among themselves. We don't, we never set a norm for ourselves that no discussion outside of this room has to be reported. Having said that, um, we received from Marilyn what I think is a very um, thoughtful uh, piece. We received it this morning. If Rich had tried to summarize all that's here by saying this is what I discern her saying, he wouldn't have done it justice and we wouldn't have learned that much. So I'm speaking now for just myself. 
I don't fault this process at all. As a matter of fact, I encourage it. I know what I've done outside of these meetings and talking to various community members to try to learn different perspectives. But I think that it's inappropriate, frankly, to say that he, it's too late or that he's trying to hide something. Um, I just don't feel it as a task force member. I think I've been as informed as possible, given the fact that this is a volunteer board with no executive director. Well, first of all, I'm not suggesting he hi he's hiding anything. The reason I asked is, you don't have time to go through all this because you all haven't been able to really read it and digest it. All I'm saying is, he was aware of it last week. So since it's an important revision, I would think that he would get some people together to put it in some kind of form so that you would be prepared because it is important. You got to the end of August, we don't have a lot of time. I, I, frankly, I think the essence of it was available in the prior submission that they made and the, the commission, uh, the task force was already aware of aspects of it. And, um, I, yeah, sorry. so I just, I, I'll leave it at that. I'm sorry that uh, uh, Mary didn't get the thing uh, before uh, Tuesday. I I'd somehow thought that it was going to be available. I'm, I'm just asking, I'm asking because you, yeah. you're saying how important it is. Well, I th and I think it's important. And so, I think we all forward. agree that it's important and we're going to dedicate and make it a priority. And it will be the first thing that we discuss at the next meeting. We'll make sure that it's on. Legistar will make sure that it's on Facebook. Anybody wants a hard copy, I will personally make you one with good ink, red ink in my printer. Okay? Mark. Hello? Oh, sorry. You I, was just, I was just uh, informing her where we're at right now. All I'm saying is, I think, I don't even, I've been to so many, I don't even remember what meeting. But it was requested that this was put in layman's terms, which you said you weren't capable of doing. So she took it upon herself uh, to help you. So I'm just saying as a member of the community, I'm just a little disgusted that more wasn't done with all that she's done, with all that you've done, that it wasn't shared earlier so that we could, because we don't have a lot of time. That's all I'm saying. Okay, well, we're going to keep moving forward, Shirley. Not very well, may I say. All right. You noted. Anyone else? Miriam. Miriam. Hi, I'm also a member of TJW, and I'm the person who um, we're calling an expert in sexual misconduct and sexual violence. What is your name again? Miriam. Thank you. Marin and Miriam from TJW. We understand her middle name's Miriam. It's a little complicated. Um, regardless, I just wanted to flag something that Robin um, was pointing out earlier. Uh, so it's possible that people will bring crimes, um, violations of the law, criminal law, to the task force. And it does seem as though the task force needs to grapple with that possibility. Um, so being as I have worked on so with sexual misconduct in college campuses, I have counseled people who have been raped, who is a violation of criminal law, and can take that to their university to receive a different type of recourse, be that mediation, or just, um, some people call it restorative justice, or they simply want that person to be removed from campus. Um, but the point is that that system has figured out a way to first and foremost tell the survivor that that is something that might happen, that they might inadvertently trigger a criminal proceeding if they um, disclose to the commission. But secondly, the commission will have instances in which there are people reporting crimes and they need to know how to, how to grapple with that. Are they going to necessarily trigger a criminal proceeding? Um, and again, the, the survivor complaint needs to be aware of that. Um, and if not, if they are going to create a uh, pseudo legal system that does not necessitate triggering a criminal proceeding they also just need to be aware of that be that for sexual violence instances or otherwise Thank you. Miriam would you be willing to meet with us as well yeah okay oh. great thank you I'm only here till the end of July though <laughs> that's okay it's got to happen <laughs> fast gonna, yeah I'm gonna push, like, push people to move faster <coughs> all right let's move on um, it's 
says on my agenda, that we're going to start to look at 3.3.7. So you can all find that on page seven. And it does appear both, both ways, in plain language and in the templates language. Page seven of the agenda packet. So 3.3.7, the timing of the report, the semicolon interim report. Um, the police chief shall make the report required by 3.3.6 within 30 days of receiving the referral under 3.35, provided that A, if ongoing disciplinary proceedings preclude the police chief from making the report in that time, then the police chief shall make the report within 14 days after conclusion of those proceedings. And B, in extenuating circumstances explained in writing by the police chief, these time limits may be extended, but only for a reasonable time. At any time, the police chief may make an interim report, and the police chief shall do so if unable to make a final report within 45 days of the re referral. Does, does anyone want to summarize the gist of what that means? Rich? I, I can summarize the gist, yeah. Um, it's, it's basically saying that the police chief should act uh, promptly, um, there may, uh, hopefully within 30, uh, 30 days, but there may be uh, reasons why not. In particular, uh, it mentions uh, uh, disciplinary proceedings, and uh, uh, the, chief, uh, the chief may uh, conclude that it's, it's improper at that point to make, uh, uh, to make a report, and, and, and the chief may be gathering in, in information. Um, uh, I think, um, based on the conversations last week, I mean, Robin raised the, uh, uh, the question of um, whether the time needs to be postponed further for uh, criminal proceedings, and, and um, the draft says ongoing disciplinary proceedings that also could be uh, a criminal investigation might, uh, might delay the time in which it's appropriate to, um, uh, for the um, chief to report. And um, I don't know whether Robin th thought that it would be necessary to have a flat rule that uh, chief shouldn't report until such time as any criminal proceedings are over. I don't know if that, uh, which occasionally could delay the whole thing quite a bit. I, w I wouldn't think that that would be necessary, but. Um, well, every complaint's know. not going to result in criminal investigation, yeah. prosecution, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But right. you know, the the issue and the holdup and the the challenge is that once the police finish their work, then it's handed over to the county prosecutor, who there is no time limit on when they can bring criminal charges. And when information is released, even to people on the commission, there are citizens in the community if they would just so happen to be in a jury pool, then you know, you, you're creating imbalance potentially for um, accused people. And you don't want people who are open-minded and um, you know, willing to, to listen to be excluded from a jury pool because they sit on some commission and they got information that now you know, would keep them from being a viable member of that pool. So putting a time limit on it, I think is going to be a challenge um, if it's going further for um, potential criminal charges. Because again, the police can't charge anything that has to come from the prosecutor. Can I ask, would you be satisfied if we added the words uh, or criminal where it says, if ongoing disciplinary proceedings we said if I'm going disciplinary or criminal proceedings preclude the chief from making a report, 
with that part. I, I think the word extenuating or you know circumstances yeah. is good enough because uh -huh. that includes mm -hmm. you know if yeah. there are criminal yeah. proceedings or if there okay. are right. union issues. Right. You know, I don't think we have to be specific. Okay. And again, I think that that's something that yeah. the uh, actual commission itself will have to yeah. tear it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I agree with that. Yeah. Any other comments on three point three point seven? Okay, 3.3.8. Further information and discussion at any time before or after the police chief makes the report required by 3.3.6. A, if the commission has information that it believes is material to consideration of the incident, it may pass that information on to the police chief. And B, if the commission believes that further information will be material to consideration of the incident, it will ask the police chief to present that information. And if the information is in the possession of the AAPD or could be secured by the AAPD by reasonable, reasonable efforts, <coughs> the police chief will include that information in the report required by 3.3.6 or in a supplemental report. After making the report required by 3.3.6, the police chief shall if either the police chief or the commission wishes, discuss the report in person with the commission. Clark, can I ask you just for something for clarification? Sure. On the original document, it says 3.3.2.B. And then in this document, it says 3.3.6. I just want to know what, which is the correct reference. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, where does it say 3.3.2.B? In the original uh, document we were given, yeah. which On is what we will we'll be reviewing yeah. because we just got this one. Oh, that, that, that's three. The, the 3.3.2.B, that's, that's uh, TJW's uh, rendition of. Uh, of what we well, it's had. actually on your on, on the task oh, yeah. force side. So the task force side should be 3.3.6. The, okay. the, the report is referred to okay. Okay. by 3.3.6. And this is assuming that the, ma the matter goes to the police department and and, uh, and the report is. This uh, one's a correct reference. Thank you. 3.3.6. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Lori, would it help if I just spoke briefly sure. about, about this? Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, I think this is an important uh, aspect. The idea here is. That the, uh, the the commission might have gathered information that it says, "Hey, uh, uh, police, you need to take this into account," and the commission might also say, "Okay, we've uh, looked at your report, and we think that there's more that you should be uh, finding. Uh, there's more questions that you should uh, you should ask, and and then the uh, uh, the department would have to uh, do that if it could be could by reasonable uh, efforts, and then." Um, Either side can say, okay, um, fine, we, we've had an exchange of information, we've gotten a report, and now we want to talk about it. Okay, and I think, um, I think that's uh, an important matter. I've, I've, from, from the beginning, we've said you know, that the commission has teeth. If it, if it can get good information, if it can demand a response, and then if it can make a public report. And, and, and I think this is... Uh, this is part of it. If the commission feels that the report is inadequate, it can say, Chief, you got to meet with us and we're going to tell you why we think it's inadequate. Right. Yeah. As, as I look at 3.3.8, it basically gives complete discretion to the commission to decide what, if anything, that they're going to pass on and what additional information yeah. it has. It has if and it has may. There's no shall or yeah. shall not. Yeah. Right. So this allows the commission to look at the particular situation and then make an independent decision. It's not directed to do anything. That's right. Um, I'd like to point out that Marin's document does yeah. have references to all of what we're talking about right now, too. So that's going to need to be part of the meeting. Well, they say keep. They didn't make any suggestions there. Um, of three, three, three seven, point, eight, three or point seven. No, honestly, right. 
there are revisions for 3.3.6. <coughs> and then new things for after 3.3.7. I guess it would be 3.3.8. That's what we're on. Well, Maren, is that what is on page 18 of the agenda packet? Where it says new, new, new? Yeah, you guys can just consider that. We don't have to talk about it right now. OK. okay. All right. Any more comments from the task force? About yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, Marin, is it inappropriate for us to be saying Marin, or, or is it transforming Washington? You can say, this is what I wrote is representative of the views of all of Transforming Justice Washington. Yeah. So yeah, so this is work that we've done collectively. Collectively. It's like, just that I'm the uh, I, I want to make that clear, sure. that, that you're just not out there by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Can we do that in terms of the task force framework also? Because yes. right now, that's what I was referring to. Marin said this, Marin thought this, Rich said Please. this, Rich yeah. thought that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and the rest of us kind of, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> So Let's refer to it as the template says. Template says, T TJW, you know, task force, just so that yeah. it feels a little bit different than what we've been here. OK. Um, shall we move to 3.3.9? Yes. Mm -hmm. Confidential production. The provisions of 3.2.2.4 with respect to confidential production of information shall apply to production of information under this 3.3, which translates as any information the Commission gets can be submitted to the Commission under any of the confidentiality <coughs> categories that also apply to the way complaints may be filed. That doesn't quite get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. When I look at what it now. gets it? So, um, uh, in the in the template, uh, uh, section uh, three point two is is about uh, policy recommendations and reports, and um, one part of that three point two point four, the template talks about access to materials, and uh, three point two point two point four it says confidential production. Production of information and materials to the Commission shall be made in confidence only if that is necessary by reason of law, collective bargaining agreement, or overriding public policy. If the producing officer, that is the person presenting the material, believes that production must be in confidence, the producing officer shall, shall so indicate and shall state the reason with particularity. Okay. So can you give us an example? Yeah. Okay, you so is that 3.3.3? We I just read 3.2.2.4. It's on okay. page 17 of the. We've got two documents of work. Correct. I know. This is not the agenda packet. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading from the original template. I'm trying to figure out where, because people uh, are going back. I'm reading, from the, I'm reading from the template. Okay. 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 So okay. what are you reading from and where? Uh, what I just read was from the, uh, uh, from the template. This. Well, no, that's no. the original template. No, that's the agenda template. From the original template. No, that's not the agenda template. Okay. Confidential production. Confidential production. 3.2.2.4. Should I read it again if you don't have it? Please. Confidential production. Production of information and materials to the Commission shall be made in confidence only if that is necessary by reason of law, collective bargaining, bargaining agreement, or overriding public policy. If the producing officer believes that production must be in confidence, the producing officer shall so indicate and shall state the reason with particularity. So there, there, there's information that the police have that they can't release publicly. Could be, for example, victim information. Okay. As I understand, that, that there's information that even the officers the subject of the complaint doesn't, uh, doesn't get. Okay. Um, there, there, there may be um, um, policies with respect to 
protection of the president that they don't, <laughs> that, that's one that's religious, they can't be released uh, publicly. There's some things by law, they can't, be, uh, they can't be released publicly, but perhaps could be released to the, um, uh, to the uh, commission. So what that says, this is 3.2.2.4 was in the context of the commission asking for information in general so we can make, so the commission can make policy recommendations. It said if the, whoever it is who's presenting the, uh, the information, the city attorney, the, the police chief, the city administrator, if that person thinks that the information that is being produced must be produced in confidence, then the, the producing person shall say why it has to be produced in confidence. And uh, it shall do so only if there's a very good reason by law, collective bargaining agreement, or overriding public policy. Okay, and, yeah. and, and then this 3.3.9 would say the same standard that applies with respect to confidential information in the context of policy recommendations report, it applies here in the context of incident yeah. I would agree with one exception. As I understand what we're saying is that if we want information, what we're saying to Wait, the commission, the commission, yeah. if the commission wants information, they are entitled to anything they want except anything they want except if it isn't the collective bargaining agreement, the law says something, but the burden now shifts to the city, the ones who are supposed to give us the information, and they say, we can't give you this specific information and because, and they have to justify <coughs> why they don't. Now, what I would add to this is that they would be required to give us all of that information take out, redact, blacken out what information you can get us, tell us why, but give us the document with just the redacted information taken away. So let's see what we get with the, inf with the other information that's on that page or in the report that isn't uh, to be withheld. So I wouldn't want the city to say there is something here in this four-page yeah. document that's, good. that's confidential and therefore you get nothing. And I'm not even sure the city, I mean, I would disagree with that. But we would, and um, so that I would like to see at some point, and I know the city may be working on this, to share with the task force a report, something that they have in their files, something for which they would want to redact things. Let us see that document. Let us see how it would look. And let us see if we can utilize that redacted document to gather information that we want to gather. And then if we disagree with the city, and that is the, what they've crossed out, we don't agree that that's a good reason, then we fight that out. But at least let's get what we can, let the city be forced to tell us why we're not, and then we can have that discussion. So I'll, all I would add is that we're entitled to everything. Um, if not, tell us why. And after you've crossed that out, give us what's left. Um, and let's see if that document in that form satisfies the city's needs and our needs. We may well get a lot of information, or if we get an entire page that's blacked out, we're saying something isn't working here. And then we, the commission is able to go back and forth and have that discussion. I would just include redaction. Okay. Um, that's fine. Can, I, can I just say, there are kind of two, two parts here. One is what information can the uh, commission get, and what information does it get um, confidentially? And this is talking about co confidential inf information. Um, uh, maybe the redaction part goes uh, uh, to, to the prior the prior part. Uh, in, in other words, um, the, the, the way the template reads, it says that the, that the producing officer has to give everything that it can legally, that they can legally. And then, if there's a reason why it has to be given in confidence, they can give it in confidence, but only if they have to legally or because of some overriding public policy. Okay. So, I mean, there are two, there are two levels of it. The redaction, um, we could go to either way. But, but I, I can talk about it, yeah. Finished with this? Okay, moving on to 3.3.10, point one. This is a category that is on the bottom of page eight of the agenda packet. 3.3.10. 3. 
I ran out of points. Ten point one. Not, not your colored <coughs> chart from TJW. Okay, I was using TJW as my cheat sheet. Um, um, okay. Got so it. this huh. is all information gathering by the commission, yep. and the first section is three point three point ten point one, the opportunity to meet with the commission. The commission will give any person, including the complainant, assuming the complaint has not been filed anonymously and any police officers involved in the incident who have in, who have has information bearing on the incident an opportunity to provide that information in person in a meeting with the commission or members or representatives this meeting will be open or confidential as the person wishes except that when a complaint is filed under seal any meetings relating to it shall be closed the meeting shall not be recorded unless the person asks that it be. The complainant shall ordinarily be given an opportunity to have this meeting within two weeks of making the complaint. So, um, all right, so uh, the idea is that uh, any person uh, can, um, can meet with the uh, commission and, uh, and speak about the complaint. Um, and uh, that includes the police officer. Though ordinarily, I, I think police officer wouldn't uh, would would meet uh, voluntarily. Uh, um, and uh, and and uh, assuming that the uh, complaint isn't um, under seal, and under seal would mean that the um, public isn't going to to know about the filing of the complaint. Assuming it's not under uh, seal, then the person who is giving the information, who's who's talking to the commission gets a chance to do it openly or in confidence as that person, uh, as that person wishes. Um, I put in brackets, uh, the, the, the um, I did the complaint show ordinary be given opportunity to have this meeting within a given time. I threw in two weeks as a possibility. I don't know if, um, uh, if that's uh, too, um, uh, too short, although it does say with commission or members of represent representatives. I don't know if we want to put uh, such a stringent uh, time limit on the um, on the commission to have that uh, have that meeting, but it ordinarily ordinarily that person would want to give the story pretty promptly. Uh, and, uh, you think, you know, so um, so that's the basic idea. You get a chance to tell uh, your story, what you have, and you get to set the terms under which it's done. And and why would you not want it um, recorded? Well, it's not, it's not formal testimony. It's not under oath. I think um, a person, I think it might create a greater comfort level if the person just thinks I'm talking, okay. you know. Um, uh, I mean, we can go, the, the, the way it's where it says it shall not be recorded unless the person asks it, uh, that it be, so it, 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 it it's, it's cool. It could go either way, and I'm just setting as a default that it's not recorded. Yeah, but uh, I mean, obviously, the task force can change that around. It's all so wishes. Right, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and when you say opportunity to meet with the commission, if the person decides that they want to meet with the whole commission, does that have to be under the Open Meetings Act? And then there is no confidentiality whatsoever. Or are they meeting well, with individual persons? Yeah. Because my well, concern is if, if, yeah. if I'm the person taking the complaint, say I, you know, I'm on the commission, I get the complaint, I'm meeting with that person, I want to make sure that I get their story accurate yeah. and correct yes. to pass on to yes. the rest of the commission. I don't want it summarized. I don't right. want right. it, um, well, let me think, maybe she said this or maybe he said that. I want to know exactly what was said because that's where a lot of misunderstanding comes in when you're trying to summarize what someone yeah. said off a meeting you had days ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. So, so far as the Open Meetings Act is concerned, the very last provision of the template, section 4.9, relation to other city law, says to the extent that this ordinance conflicts with any city law of any type, including without limitation, any ordinance rule, regulation, or executive order, other than the city charter, this ordinance shall prevail. Okay. And I had in mind particularly the Open Meetings Act, meaning that, and I'm not even sure if the Open Meetings Act by itself would require that to be open because it's such a personal thing, but that means that if this ordinance says this meeting shall be closed, that prevails over the Open Meetings Act. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so um, the open, 
a lot of people, maybe, a lot of people will want to bring their complaints confidential in the sense that they don't want the public to know. And I think, I think that the ordinance has to be able to provide them that opportunity. Um, if, if, if somebody, uh, an example from my experience with the uh, U of M committee, um, a complaint about uh, mishandling of, of a sexual violence complaint. Well, that person did not want that, that, that aired publicly. You know, there are lots of complainants who don't want an encounter with the police aired publicly. So I think the person has to have the ability to keep it, uh, to keep it closed. Is that what you mean by uh, am I recorded? Yeah, I understand no, what yeah. you're saying, documented some yeah, kind of way yeah. so that it's accurate. I understand what you're saying. I see a difference between the University of Michigan, which is a school yeah. and the city of the state, I yeah. get all of that, versus a city which is has to answer to its citizens. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm not sure if the Open, Open Meetings Act would apply or not. I don't know that an ordinance can overrule it, because I think it can, yeah. yeah Steve's saying no. Well, I, I'm well, not I'm sure it can. It overrule the resolution. She asked whether it overrules the state law. The state, 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 state law, correct. But the state, the state law, I don't think, would apply to the commission. If Rather than get, if yeah. it's a city, I, I don't think we should get into yeah, this. Is a I highly mean, legal discussion. Yeah, it it truly is. So, so that again, yes. that's something that I think. Um, yes. We need to be clear yes. on yes. what the law is yes. as to that. If it's state law, can it be overridden by the city uh, charter? I don't no, no. think so, correct. No. Um, so then we've got that whole issue to deal with. Can we really say to them, if they say, I want to meet with the commission yeah. as a whole, can that be a confidential meeting or not? If they say they want to meet with one individual, um, we want to make sure that whatever that meeting is, is accurate and appropriate. Yeah. Or the commission does. I keep saying we, but them yeah. would be my concern. Yes, Dick. The commission is not going to knowingly operate in violation of the law. How do we know that they're citizens? No, no, I'm saying that the commission won't knowingly. Oh, knowingly. I knowingly violate the law. Right. And whether the Open Meetings Act applies or not is yes. not going to be resolved here. It has certain exceptions. The Open Meetings Act says everything has to be open except and there's a number of exceptions. I have no idea what falls into what exception. I think that's for the commission to decide. Okay. Is when the decision to set, when they have a meeting, they have to d make those decisions as every commission does. So I would leave that to the commission okay. to decide whether their meetings, um, the, the particular meeting that they're calling does or does not comply with the Open Meetings Act. And, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think then the language just needs to be broader. And your point is that that meeting, if it is not open, needs to be needs the assurance of of accuracy, accuracy. and appropriateness. Absolutely, absolutely. 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 it has to be accurate. So, yeah. so, so I'm saying, are you saying that it, it should be recorded if it's not visible? I'm, I'm saying that that again is something the commission is going to have yeah. to decide. But yeah. I don't. I wouldn't want to um, depend on someone who's taking shorthand yeah. notes because yeah. someone's talking very you know telling them the story they're excited and you're trying to take shorthand notes and get the big bullet points mm -hmm. and then when you bring it back to the commission it's missing really important stuff mm -hmm. can, can i ask i mean what what people think about the timing um i mean way the draft reads it's that it's a meeting with the commission or members of representatives and that the complaining has the opportunity within two weeks. Now, it's not always going to be practical to have a meeting with a whole commission within two weeks, um, which highlights the concern that you've got that if the whole commission is going to act on the complaint eventually, the whole commission will be there. So I'm just wondering, I mean, to what extent, uh, uh, we, we don't have to have a two week rule. We don't have to have anything. I think it'd be very hard, because again, you're going to yeah. have. You know, the commission's going to have to figure that out yeah. because they're going to be volunteers. Yeah, right. Um, availability, time, and then how often a month they're actually going to meet. I mean, if you if you do twice a month for two or three hours at six hours, then is there the expectation of the commission to meet outside, um, outside the normal commission meeting times? 
a lot of that I think is going to the commission is going to have to figure out. I think mm -hmm. it would be recommendate. You know, maybe it's subcommittees um, that are formed to be able to handle uh, the work that needs to be done, and there could be recommendations of possible yeah, subcommittees. Yeah, I think we're moving into um, composition, which is Article Two. Right. So, can we? Can I just say this, Laura? I just think that even as we're talking about that, we need to keep in mind that when somebody brings a complaint, they need somebody to do something about it. They need to know that something is happening, that they don't have yeah. to sit around for weeks on end right. until a volunteer can come around. So I think that that needs to be at the forefront of however we want to frame it. Mm -hmm. But when people make a complaint, and, I'm a, and these aren't frivolous complaints, some somehow that citizen, that participant in the city, that resident needs to know that something is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just saying, keep it. I'm not saying put it two weeks, yeah. but I'm just saying it, it just feels like we're saying, well, whenever they get around to it, or whenever they can make time for it. And I'm sure that's not the intent of what's being said, but that's how it feels from where I'm sitting right now. So just that it needs to be kept at the forefront of the mind that when people are coming to this commission and needing help, needing assistance, needing to know that somebody is looking at whatever it is they're bringing about, whatever it is they're bringing forth, whatever the incident is, they need to have some assurance that it's not just sitting there somewhere. So, so the the, the uh, template already does say that um, um, uh, a member representing the commission shall attempt promptly to communicate with the complainant. Um, to acknowledge receipt of the complaint, explain the complaint, its options, procedural consequences, and has to change the choices. So there is an immediate, immediate contact. And, and the question now is, OK, there's been that contact, so the, so the complainant knows attention is being paid. When does the complainant get to tell the story that the complainant wants to the, to the commissioner, some, some part, and how demanding should, should we be? And I, I think that that is going into the other articles, how the commission is going to function and. Well, well, I guess I'm just asking, do we want anything like that by a sentence that I have in brackets? And do we want, do we want it? And if not, if we want something like that, should it just say promptly? Should it say a great, a greater time in two weeks? I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm just asking, what, what should be there? Well, I think we want to make it conditional on with sensitivity to the needs of the complainant. Um, I know that there are references in the TJW document to time the timing of things mm -hmm. as well. Um, I'd like to break and ask if there are public comment about the things that we've just covered. Miriam? One of the things that I've heard come up a few times is sensitivity to the complainant and um, making sure that the complainant is continually consented throughout the process, told this, uh, making this decision to make this anonymous, report anonymous or not, make the, deci the decision for the report to be under seal or not, um, for that complainant to be um, explained multiple times, what the implications of that decision is. Um, in an analogous sexual misconduct reporting system, I've seen um, victim advocates used for things like that, who's, pers who's a, for example, a social worker who's hired, paid, and his sole job is to meet with the person at the onset when that person might be filing a complaint, recognize, like, this is an incredibly hard thing that you're doing. Play that support system role um, throughout the process. They can come to the meetings if the um, complainant so chooses. They can advise the complainant at any stage of the process. Uh, and they can do things like explain to the complainant why 100 or 300 days later they haven't heard anything from the city, um, which may, for, from the complainant's perspective, feel like negligence, but it's actually just part of the bureaucratic process of folks having multiple things to do and having a paid, a paid um, social, social worker victim's advocate could um, mitigate some of that feeling of um, an individual being very small within a bureaucratic system that they can't fundamentally understand. Um, so I just wanted to put that out that it could be um, a way to deal with some of these uh, issues in, in, uh, at each stage of the process. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments? 
Okay, we are at 844. Um, let's keep going. 3.3.10.2. I didn't think we would get to this. <laughs> Questioning of the officer. Ordinarily, this is on page 9 of the agenda packet. Ordinarily, given the report required by 3.3.6, and opportunities for follow-up, the Commission should not need to meet with the officer or officers involved in the incident. If, however, the Commission believes that because of the unusual nature of the case, it is essential for it to question an involved officer about the incident, and the officer does not appear before the Commission voluntarily, the police chief shall instruct the officer to <coughs> appear, to make a statement, and to answer questions. In such a case, the officer shall retain all rights, including the Garrity right, protecting the officer against use of the officer's statement in a criminal case against the officer, and the Weingarten right, allowing the officer to be accompanied by a union representative. And if the officer is represented by counsel, then counsel may accompany the officer. Phew. Rich? Well, okay, so this is, uh, I've, I've always thought this is going to be one of the critical aspects of the whole thing, one of the more, more sensitive aspects of the, uh, of the whole thing. Obviously, there's a complaint against the officer, the commission might want to hear from the officer uh, uh, personally. Um, um, a couple things. The, the officer ordinarily is not going to uh, um, appear voluntarily. I mean, that's uh, understanding because. Um, he, he, well, the, the, the officer is at, at risk. Anything that the officer, if there's a chance of criminal uh, prosecution, if there's a chance of any uh, civil litigation, the officer is just uh, exposing himself or herself there by, by any, uh, any statement. So ordinarily, the officer would not uh, appear uh, voluntarily. My understanding is that um, the, uh, the um, officer may be instructed to make a statement and, and the commission is a city body, and the officer may be instructed to make a, uh, a statement to this uh, city body. If the officer is instructed, the officer re re retains the right that um, the, um, anything that the officer says in that context can't be used against him or her um, uh, in a criminal case uh, because it was compelled. That's the uh, guarantee. And the, and the officer has the right to be, uh, to be accompanied. The officer is still at risk, which is one reason why there, there's resistance. And you see Eric Rano with the statement. The officer is still at risk uh, that anything said there might, um, might uh, uh, create uh, or, or um, expose him or her to uh, increased risk of civil liability. So nobody's going to be happy about this. Um, I don't think the, um, the chief would be happy compelling it. I don't think the officer would be happy uh, making the, uh, uh, the, the the statement, um, but I mean I can imagine that there are circumstances in which the commission would uh, would would want. I do want to say though that I, I mean the, the preparatory language here says that most often I don't think it's going to be necessary, and the reason is that the commission will already have the information from the department. It will have the essence of the state. It will it will, it, it will have know what the officer claims to have done. It will have the video evidence, whatever that, uh, that is. It will have the explanation that the officer had. Most often, I don't think it's necessary. In my own experience, in most complaints, there's not so much of a debate over just what happened by the time the thing was resolved. The debate is more, what do we think about it? Was this good behavior or not? What should happen in like cases in the, in the future? Much, much less about what did the officer do and what was in the officer's mind. So I, I, I think that. Well, I, I think you just made the point of why it might be necessary at some times. It, it might be necessary at what sometimes. What was in the officer's mind. Yeah, but I, that, that, that could be. But, but I'm saying that, that most often that will be, be explained. So that's why I had the prefatory language to say, basically, be cautious, commission, about doing this. Ordinarily, you got enough information. Only do it when necessary. 
I think if the commission approaches in that way, it'll be uh, more constructive. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't address the uh, subpoena issue, uh, but uh, I um, ordinarily, if, if the ordinance says this has to happen, then then the we would expect the city officers to do what the ordinance says. Do you know whether so, this? I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead Monica. No, I guess I, as I listen to what you're saying, I guess I'm not so much concerned with the most often. I think something has to cover the exception to the most often, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's what has to be the concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why, as it's drafted, it gives the commission the power to demand. Okay. It just seemed to be emphasis on most often everything will be there, and 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 well, honestly, the things that are coming before the commission are probably not going to be the most often exactly. things. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the reasons you need a commission is because yes. you have those things that are not most often. I'm saying most often when there are complaints. That's my experience. When, when there are yeah, complaints. That's a really tiny piece of experience, Rich. No, no, I'm, my experience in handling complaints, I'm saying. Okay. In handling complaints has been that usually you. you All I'm yeah. saying is that we have to, okay. to be careful yeah. to think yeah. about the unusual yeah, absolutely. And the absolutely. other than most often. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. Thank you. Dick? Do, does anybody know whether currently um, the collective bargaining agreement gives the police officer the right to testify and not testify outside of the police department, um, whether they're subject to it or whether they've limited it to it? Because really what we're doing, we're asking city council to issue an ordinance. City council has already entered into a, a contract with the police protecting or not protecting certain rights. I think it's a good idea, but I think we ought to know at least whether this is a prohibited thing or not. If it's something they have discretion about or it doesn't address it, then I think the policies that we're talking about are important. But if it's not, then we, at least sh we should at least be knowing about that to see how we take it on. And I don't know the answer to that. But we can certainly we can, find yes, out. Yes, that's what I'm asking. Yes, Sumi. Yeah, I, I just want to raise one issue. Uh, yesterday we had the Human Rights Commission and the mother of the young gentleman who had an incident at the Blake Transit Center <coughs> came and spoke to the Human Rights Commission. And um, it's not as simple as, um, Rich, you, you, you said something. The question isn't about what really happened because by the end of the process, everybody kind of agrees what happens. It's more like the police officer is going to come, you're going to ask them what was in their mind or is this right? I'm paraphrasing you, if I'm right. Um, I, I don't know if that's where we are. I mean, it seems to be that a lot of times, um, whether the dash cam had uh, voice recording or not or as the mother said she couldn't see voice recording on the tapes so there is dispute even regarding what happens and I, I'm not sure what's the point of finding out what was in the mind of the police officer I mean um, I, I think we want to make a decision based on what we see, whether they were following protocol or not following protocol or going over their authority or are we giving trespass to children when we are not supposed to be giving trespass to children. So I'm not sure the whole value of uh, pinning it to finding out the intent of the police officer, okay. right? It's okay. And I think you brought a good point, too. I, I believe most of the Ann Arbor officers have body cams, so there may be tape available for a specific incident, too. Great. I, I think, you know, ultimately, I think for the commission, what's going to be important, no matter what, you're going to have to come up, you're going to it's going to have to have, be fair in how it handles all calls for both the complainant and whether it's the officer or not to in how they discuss and do the reviews otherwise if it starts coming that the commission in any way is always biased one way or the other whether it's for the police officers or 
it's going to have no credibility uh, within the community, with the police officers, with the people, or anything else. And, and that, that, that's going to be one of the most important things, is they have to be fair and unbiased in how they approach every single complaint that comes in, to be able to listen and have information that is from both sides, mm -hmm. and, and then uh, to seek out as much information as you can. It, it, because if it loses at any point its credibility, mm -hmm. it, it, there's no reason for it to exist anymore. Exactly. Are there any final comments? Because we're at 856. Public. What? Can there be public comment now? You guys sure. You were talking about the segment about questioning a police officer, but I think that's a segment where we would be talking about subpoena power. Um, and so I just want to, Rich, in your or in page 27 of this packet, there's a whole outline of why um, folks are against having subpoena power. Um, and I think that my concern is that um, it's less with. So right now we had a whole discussion, a majority of the discussion focused on the police officer. My concern is that somebody is coming to this commission because they have been harmed. And the commission is going to Ann Arbor Police Department to find out any information about that incident that it can. And so my concern is that the Ann Arbor Police Department might not be sharing information, might not willingly give up any inf information that it has, documentation that it has to this commission. So I hope that because there's an ordinance that says they need to share that information with the commission, that the police department does that, that it shares evidence, and if they need to ask the officer questions, that they can. Um, maybe they have body cam uh, information, and so they don't even need to talk to the officer. Great, the commission doesn't need to talk to the officer because they have body cam, in body cam information. But I think that the commission should have in its toolbox the ability to compel the city and police officers to share information should they refuse to do so. And I don't think it's, and I think one of the things that you guys were concerned about was the need for there to be trust between the police department and the commission. And my concern is that right now the HRC is asking for information around trespass citations from the Ann Arbor Ann Arbor Police Department and they don't have that information. So they're an independent body of the city without any power to compel the AEPD to give them information and therefore they haven't received that information. So I hope if an ordinance is, you know, enacted that somehow that would change their behavior. And hopefully they wouldn't be the ones that are then, you know, um, being adversarial and not sharing that information. That's what you're talking about, the police being adversarial and not complying with an ordinance of the city. And my concern with not having subpoena power to given to the commission is that then you have to, in this process, have multiple people come to a commission, share their story of trauma with a commission, potentially have the commission try to look into that, the commission not receive information from the AAPD, so they can't actually investigate that information. <coughs> and so then multiple people have to be re-traumatized to not have anything happen, and then we have to wait until finally enough people mm -hmm. don't have information come in, and then we have to seek subpoena power. So I think how many people have to be re-traumatized before this commission has a tool in its toolbox, should it need it, right now, versus having to wait for 10 people, for 20 people, how many women have to be harassed, and then have the AAPD not share information with the commission, and the commission has no ability to compel that information. This is something you can add in now, and I certainly hope that the commission never has to use it. That would be great. You had a conversation with the Baltimore City Attorney's Office. They say they never have to use subpoena power. That's fantastic. I hope that AEPD complies in any request the commission would make. But they should have a tool in the toolbox that they can use should the commission, should the AEPD not comply. So I had a question specifically about um, Garrity and Weingarten and those sites in 
10.2. Um, as a matter of process, I think that if they are not referred to earlier in the ordinance, that the full sites should be included. But my question specifically is about Garrity because I've, I've just Googled this and read on Wikipedia. I haven't read the opinion itself, but the way I'm reading at least basic information about Garrity v. New Jersey is that it functions a lot like Miranda. It's about the Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, right? And so like Miranda, like the police tell you, you have a right to remain silent, but if you do choose to say something, it can be used against you. And so for, for, from what I'm reading, Garrity functions similarly. It's a Fifth Amendment protection so that it seems like there's things called Garrity warnings. that are sometimes read to officers in these situations so that compelled testimony can't be used against them but that after receiving a warning they can choose to, uh, to give t uh, they can choose to speak and if they've waived their <coughs> garrity right then that uh, then whatever they say can be used against them in uh, in criminal cases so but what i heard you say about garrity is that anything that the officer says at these hearings would not be able to be used against them in a criminal case be it compelled or not compelled which seems to be a little bit different from what Garrity says, and also se seems to be a different policy choice. Are you suggesting that everything it said in these meetings would be considered protected and not able to be used against them in criminal cases, not because of Garrity, but because we want to give them protections and want to encourage them to speak more to, to the commission, or? I'll, I'll have to look, look for it. My understanding was with Garrity that, that the officer has the right, if compelled to speak, well, ordinarily, a person doesn't have uh, has the right not to be compelled to speak, but an officer can be compelled by the superiors mm -hmm. to speak, and then saying, "Well, if you are going to be compelled, then it can't be used against you." That's my understanding. Yeah, I think there's nothing in here that says anything about compelled testimony in the TJW uh, revision. It does talk about okay. compelled testimony, oh, okay. and I think that okay. that would need to be explained. Uh, so, so that it's that only compelled. That. Yeah, that that it would only yeah. be compelled testimony that yeah. wouldn't be able to be used against them. That was them. the only intention. Yeah, or that that uh, that like if if warnings are given uh, under Garrity, then people then that can be waived, and so I think that there is a policy choice to be made there, right? Do we want to go further than that and say that everything said at these meetings cannot be used against an officer in order to con encourage greater dialogue and like greater like more uh, like more divulging of information, mm -hmm. or do we want to give them a choice and say like, okay, we aren't going to compel you to say anything. But if you, uh, and we're going to give you this warning, and then you can make a choice about what exposure you'll, you'll receive. So that, um, what Vivian's introduced, the idea of um, offering protection in order to be able to engage more fully with the officer is headed toward the more transformative justice direction um, and the restorative justice model, I'm thinking. And I would really like to explore that more if this is a place where that could be opened up. So I guess I will. <laughs> okay. Um, Yikes, it's 9.03. Robert, can you give us any flags, a list of flags? Yeah. So in terms of things that seem to have been met with universal agreement. Um, Could you speak loudly, please? Yeah, Especially, sorry. Would, would you emphasize universal? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that three to four members of the task force are going to sit as sort of a subcommittee with Transforming Justice. Um, and go over the submittal that was made, along with uh, members from city administration, and that the group that sat down and had that discussion was going to be gender balanced. Um, um, 3.3.7, um, there was a brief discussion that the awards extenuating circumstances were sufficient for the complaints there, so I don't think there are any changes made there. Uh, 3.38, um, the comments there were minor, so there was no real discussion there. Um, 3.39, 3.3, 10.1, and 
3.310.2. Um, okay, other than a brief flag on redaction for 3.39, um, but that was something worth including um, in, in case the city wanted to turn over information you know, partially but not completely that there didn't seem, seem to be opposition to. Everything else was fairly contested. So there's nothing there that I'm comfortable saying, you know, this seems to be an agreement. That's it? That's what I have. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll add some things that, because uh, I thought um, I, uh, we have a big issue that we're going to discuss uh, further, but there are some smaller points that I thought can be added into 3.3.2.6, 2, 2 to 3.3.3.6, about the not asking immigration questions, about uh, not asking about uh, uh, anything with respect to citizenship or residence. Um, I, I, I guess saying not to ask on the form about uh, race or sex, although I would have thought that was clear. Having, I, I the, the, the draft said available on request at the city clerk's office. I'm not sure if it needs to, we need to say in addition to kiosk, um, I mean, is that just uh, enough uh, city, city clerk? I mean, if there's a desire to say something beyond available to city clerk's office, we can do that. Um, uh, computer. Let's see. Um, did, did you, excuse me, did you hear me say that there are some people who will not go into city hall? Oh, that, that's just one, one option. There, yes. there, there, there are plenty of other options that are listed there, mm -hmm. but that was just as to the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it also mentions... Um, Community centers, um, uh, library. yes, the, the, library. Library, 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 and all that. Library. Yeah, so that's just the, the, the one thing. Um, PJW raised the complaint classification uh, system. We didn't really discuss that, but um, if the if the task force likes, we can certainly have something on that. I think, as I said, I I'd be inclined to include that in the reporting portion. Um, um, so all all that we can. Um, um, we can um, write in, uh, I, I, I can work on that and see if we can take into account of that, but we'll have to deal with the other issues. And of course, we haven't, we haven't resolved anything on being there, well, there are um, a great many suggestions that they gave that are on point. And um, I, I know I don't need to do this, but we need to study it and not just read it. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, mm. Uh, I, it's my belief that wherever truth comes from, you need to accept it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And get personalities and perceptions of where somebody might be on a continuum of right to left and just look for the truth. That's what we're married to. The only reason we are here, I believe, the only reason I'm here, is for community safety. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. And any idea that one of us or even the majority of us may have can be altered if we get new light. Mm -hmm. am, am I wrong in, in saying that? No. no. Okay. Yeah, motion for adjournment. Let's do it. We are adjourned.